Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Ask Andrea, where uh, you get to ask your questions and I answer them live. So uh, I'll be here for about 40 minutes or so, maybe 35. Depends. It's beautiful outside. I really want to go outside and take a walk. <laughs> so I have a ton of questions that came in on my website, www.andreabeeman.com. I'm going to sort through them. I can't get to all of them because it's really a lot, probably about 50 or 60 questions or something like that. Plus, I'm going to be answering your questions live. So if you have questions, pop them in and, uh, and I'll see if I can get to them. So let's get started here. Let's get started. Um, hi, Dawn. So, uh, so somebody wrote in, her name was Carrie. She said, should I do Paragard or should I do a really good probiotic to rid myself of Candida? I usually have cramps with sudden urges to go. Sorry, TMI. But I've heard walnut hull could make that worse. I'm confused what to do. Okay, so um, uh, Paragard is a product that it's, it's for um, deworming. Right, so black walnut hull can make your intestinal problems feel a little bit worse in the beginning if you do have some parasites in there, which is, you know, like I'm going to say a large majority of the population already has parasites. Mostly, your body keeps them in check. Hi, Lisa. Uh, mostly, your body keeps them in check, but um, sometimes they get out of hand. Meaning, you know, like the, if you have a leaky gut, you know, you'll have an overgrowth of uh, viruses and bacteria and parasites that come and take over your whole digestive system. They make you crave things that you wouldn't normally crave, like Oreo cookies in the middle of the night or something like that. So, um, so I actually do recommend black walnut hull because I think it's a fantastic vermifuge. And you will have some cramping because that's what it's going to do. As, as those little bugs, as those little worms or whatever it is that is upsetting your digestive system in the first place, as they start to detach from the walls, right, of your intestines and your colon, it's going to be painful and you're going to get some cramping and probably some diarrhea. Um, but hey, that's all part of the protocol. <laughs> okay, so a question came in from Trish. Trish says, when I wake up in the morning, I'm in a high state of anxiety and I feel like I am coming undone. Um, could this be that maybe my cortisol is too high? And if so, do you rec have any recommendations? Okay. Cortisol is supposed to be high in the morning, right? It's your get up and go. Let's get moving. Uh, it's supposed to be lower in the evening, right, to help you go to sleep. Uh, if you're waking up in the morning with a high state of anxiety, you have to look at your circumstances, your life, your job. Um, you're waking up into the world. And there's something about the world that you feel unsafe about, which is, it's normal. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world that can make you, you know, afraid to get up and get out of bed and get moving. But right now, look at the things that you can control, the things that are in your control. Can you change your job? Uh, if, if your husband is beating you, can you get out of the house? <laughs> you know, like, like you're waking up with this anxiety. So um, something is triggering you in the world, right? So you're in the world, you're getting up. You should wake up in the morning. I, I shouldn't say should. Um, it would be ideal to wake up in the morning, open your eyes and go, okay, it's another day. What am I going to do today? Am I inspired? Uh, am I doing work that I love? Uh, you know, my relationship's good. Uh, how is my life going, right? So when you wake up with like that kind of stuff, when you're feeling good and positive, and I would suggest you journal. Uh, hi, Jessica. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I would suggest you journal in the morning. I journal every single morning. I've been doing it for like, uh, well, I'm going to say nine out of 10 mornings. I, I've been doing it for, I don't know, 20 years. And I, I journal all the stuff that's bugging me. Oh, this happened yesterday. And now I got to say this to this person. And I want to do that. And blah, 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 blah. I puke for about two and a half pages. And then I write, um, all the things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful for my clients. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my husband. Right? I'm grateful for the bed and the pillow. I'm grateful for the sunshine. I'm grateful for the rain. Right? All of these things that I'm grateful for because I want to go into the world with that positive frame of mind because as soon as I step outside my door, there's a lot of stuff going on. Right? So um, I can't change all that other stuff. I can only change my internal experience and how I'm reacting to that stuff. Okay, so uh, that's my advice to you. I, I hope uh, I hope you can use it. <laughs> um, Janet says I don't have a large intestine. It's been 18 years, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, and I don't have a bag, uh, so it's been reattached. Small intestine to the rectum. I also don't have a gallbladder. Wow, you, they really been cutting you up. I also don't have a gallbladder, and I have stomach is issues, upper abdominal bloating, gas, and heartburn. How can I bring my body into a rhythm when my meridians have been disrupted? on a huge level, please and thank you. 
I've been seeking this answer for a long time. Okay, so yes, your meridians have been disrupted. Um, anytime that an organ comes out, there's like almost like a little skip, right? A skip inside the system. But what you can do is when you're, we're powerful creatures. When you're in meditation, visualize your body whole and complete energetically. Physically, it may not be whole and complete. Like, you know, like um, when a soldier loses a, a limb or an arm, or someone in an accident loses a limb or an arm, they always say, oh, I feel like it's still there. That's because energetically, the vibration is still there. Physically, it's not there. So energetically, your intestines and your gallbladder have been removed um, and lots of stomach issues. So what can't you digest in this world, Janet? What is going on? What can't you digest? What can't you stomach? Right? So get to that first, the emotional component connected to that. What can I stomach? And then find a way to digest your experiences. So on the physical level, I would recommend for you, because you have all this inflammation going on and all this other stuff, I would recommend simple teas, right? Nice and gentle in your system. Chamomile tea would be great, something like that. Um, just start there. Uh, Trish says, what is leaky gut and what do you do for it? Love you, lady. I love you too, little sugar. Uh, that's a bigger conversation, but leaky gut, you know, like we all have when you're born – you have uh, little holes, little pinholes in your intestines, right? And when you are breastfed, which is the ideal, right? When you attach to the teeth as a baby and you take the, the, you know, all of the antibodies from the mom and all the nutrients from the mom and all the, all the little bacteria from the mom, everything goes into your system and it fills those little holes with all of the bacteria. It's in the colostrum. I think it's called the colostrum, uh, that first 72-hour window where your mom is implanting your digestive system with all the things you need to digest food, which unfortunately, um, uh, for quite a few decades, women were encouraged not to breastfeed. Uh, you know, I don't know who was the brainchild on that one. <laughs> what? What? Why do we got these things, right? It's going to feed the, you look into, into the animal world. You look at all the mammals, right? The, the baby comes out, it attached to the teeth. That is the food for the baby. It, re it colonizes their whole body so that they have what they need to make it through this life. Um, so I don't know if I just went off on a tangent. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, that's all, I think that's all I have to say. Oh, leaky gut. Yo, yeah, so leaky gut is when that intestinal um, environment becomes compromised, either through not being breastfed as a child or rounds and rounds and rounds of antibiotic, which destroys your bacteria, that contributes to leaky gut, as well as stress will contribute to leaky gut because you can't digest. As soon as your stress hormone is as activated, digestion shuts down. And if you eat while your digestive system is shut down, it's going to cause problems in your digestive system. So you have to relax, be uh, chilled out before you eat a meal. Don't eat on the run. Don't eat when you're freaking out. You know, like that kind of stuff. There's a reason why... You know, it's, it's fight or flight and rest and digest. That's the way that it works. If you're in fight, and fl fight or flight, you're not going to rest and digest. Um, okay, so let's get to the next question. Um, Geraldine says, my current physical cue is constipation. I'm 55 and I've had fairly regular well-formed BMs my whole life. About three months ago, after intense stress, my stools have turned into rabbit pellets. My bowels still move regularly, but the stools are as hard as marbles. Help, please. Okay, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, this stress that happened had to do with your family <laughs> because um, your colon, uh, at least your large intestine, is directly connected to your family unit on the emotional and spiritual level. Um, yeah, little rabbits. Somebody just put in little rabbits or is those cats? <laughs> right, so... So if you had intense stress three months ago and now you're having rabbit pellets, um, you could certainly do things to soften your stools. Make sure you're getting water, of course, because you need the water, right? That's going to help soften the stool, stools. You also need to make sure you're having both soluble and insoluble fiber, right, on the physical level. But this is bigger. On the emotional level, this didn't happen until you had an intense stress. So... Whatever was the trigger of that intense stress, and like I said, it's your colon, so that's first chakra. I want you to look up first chakra. That is directly connected to your family. Whatever was the stress still is not resolved, right? It may have passed, but it's still unresolved. Otherwise, your bowel movement would be normal. Um, so that's something to think about. 
Uh, and I'll get to these questions. Uh, hi, everybody. I see the questions coming in. I'm getting to these 875,000 questions first, and I'll, I'll go back and forth between these questions. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, Cindy says, what can you do to heal and build back bone if you have been diagnosed with the beginnings of osteoporosis? The first thing that I want you to do is go to my website, www.andrewbeeman.com, and start and put in the word um, osteoporosis into the search bar or put in the word bones into the search bar. It's the little um, magnifying glass at the top, and that'll give you all of my information about healing your bones. Um, but I've had lots of clients that have come back from osteoporosis, uh, back, they first they go to osteoporosis, then they go back into osteopenia, and then they become normal. It takes, depends on how old you are. It may take one to two years. Bone stocks, vitamin K, rich foods, so that's all of your fermented foods. Um, but make sure you get those bone stocks into your diet. And, you know, bone stocks, beans, seaweed, vitamin K, all of that, making sure you, you have enough protein and not too much protein because that will actually uh, deplete the, the bones. Um, okay. So let me go to a question here. Uh, Tammy says, hello from Japan. Would love to eat more healthy, but I have Crohn's, and most veggies kill my stomach. Okay, so first of all, with Crohn's, um, you have to look at the what's going on in your digestive system. Number one is their parasites, right? So I would, with Crohn's, I actually do recommend a parasite cleanse. You could look on my website, look under, put the word parasite in there. I do recommend for Crohn's, colitis, anything that's causing inflammation in there, there's something inside that has disrupted the integrity of your intestines. Um, and also, with anyone with Crohn's, I don't recommend raw veggies, right? So if you're going to have veggies, you have them in soups, well-cooked, so that the fibers have been broken down and they're easier to absorb and digest. Uh, you don't want your body doing that, that work. Um, okay, so that extra work. So Ali says... And by the way, it's hot in here. This is New York City, and it's 83 degrees or something like that. It's sweltering, just in case you're wondering why I'm sitting here in just a little tank top. <laughs> it's really hot. Uh, okay, uh, Ali says, I am very healthy. I've always been athletic and active and have candida. I have great skin, good digestion, but in the last two years have become more food and alcohol sensitive and have more fatigue. I know my adrenals are shot. And now I'm getting hot flashes with my perimenopausal state. I also know I have radiation in my body. I need a detox, right? <laughs> so the question is, you're very healthy. You've always been athletic and active, and you have candida. So you say that you have good digestion, but if you have candida overgrowth, your digestive system has been compromised because, you know, your ileocecal valve separates the large intestine from the small intestine, right? So we all have candida. It's normal and it's natural, but that candida, guess what? needs to be in your large intestine. That's where it thrives. Um, so when that, when that valve becomes weak or unhealthy, right, the candida come out and they go into the small intestine and they start to eat up all your nutrients. Guess what? Adrenal fatigue, exhaustion, right? You're having more and more fatigue. So your intestines are actually not healthy. Um, so I would suggest that and I'm looking at large intestine when I'm thinking about, you know, candida stuff. We're looking at large intestine. Um, you could put some black walnut hull to tone the intestines. Um, make sure you're eating locally and seasonally because that helps keep the internal environment in harmony with the external environment. It'll strengthen all of your valves. That's the way that it works. People always say to me, Andrea, you're such a stickler for that, eating locally and seasonally. And this is one of the reasons because people say, I'm eating healthy, right? And then they're eating the same food all year long. Not healthy. I understand that broccoli has its attributes as well as kale, but they don't grow all year long. That's not the way that it works. Right? There are different things that grow at different times of the year, and those things all have – there's soil, right? And the soil changes every season of the year, whether it's the wet season, the dry season, the fall, the spring, the summer. The, the bacteria in the soil changes. And guess what? When you eat the food that has this bacteria on it and that bacteria, it's going to feed the various – bacteria that's in your intestines, and it's going to make your intestines healthy and strong. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's let's get up. Hi, Agatha. <laughs> She's like, what's up, Chief? Teach. <laughs> uh, let me come back here. Uh, Rosemary says, 
Hi, Andrea, do you have recommendations for high blood pressure? I was in the ER this weekend for alarming high blood pressure. Okay, so high blood pressure in TCM or in uh, traditional real old medicine, right? Ancient medicine, ancient healing medicine, which I love and I use in my practice and with my clients and what I teach my students. Um, the emotions are carried in the blood, right? So if the high blood pressure, if the blood pressure went up skyrocketing, what's going on emotionally, right? So I had a client, he was an old fella. When I say old fella, I don't mean like old, like in a bad way. I mean like, like older, like he was like 78 years old. And high blood pressure, really, really high. And I sat with him one day and I said, okay, get your little blood pressure machine. And he put his little thing on and it was really high. And I said, okay, we're going to breathe and we're going to meditate. I didn't say meditate because that scares the heck out of people. Uh, dog, dog just, the dog is crying over there. It's got to go out. So I don't know how long we're going to be here today. Uh, okay. So I said, okay, we're just going to breathe, right? So I made him breathe just for three minutes, right? We took the pressure and then it was really high. And I said, okay, we're just going to breathe. So we, I made him bring his breath out of his chest because he was up here living in a, in a fear breath, right? When you take a breath and it lands in your chest, that's a fear breath. So you want to take your breath and learn, retrain it to go down into your lower abdomen and then fill up your chest. That's a full breath, right? They teach you this in yoga, uh, right? So this will bring down your blood pressure like that. Just simply breathing, focusing on your breath, following the breath into the body, down into the lower abdomen and exhaling and following the breath. Do it for two minutes, do it for three minutes. I, I would suggest doing it for 10 minutes, right? If you could do 10 minutes, my gosh, your day will coast. You'll coast. Uh, so try that, you know. Um, also, also, I would suggest um, putting a little more vegetables into your diet, <laughs> <laughs> right, because vegetables are naturally high in potassium that'll uh, help to bring your your blood pressure down. Okay, so let's come here. Oh, thanks, Paris. She said I look radiant. <laughs> it's the heat. I've got this dewy little complexion from the heat. Okay, so this person says, uh, Diane. Diane says, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Jamie. Jamie says, I know artificial sweeteners are awful. However, I still use stevia in my coffee. Should I ditch this? I mean, I love coffee and I need a sweetener. <laughs> okay, so if you need a sweetener in your coffee, so this is telling me two things. The first is if you need coffee, not just wanting coffee, but if you need coffee, then this is showing that the body is internally exhausted, right? So if the body is internally exhausted, there's something, either you're doing too much or you're not getting the nutrition that you need to keep up with what you're doing or you're not getting the sleep that you need. So um, that's something to look at. Why do you need coffee? You could have coffee if you want it. Oh, I could have a cup of coffee. But if you need the coffee, this is a totally different situation. You could be addicted to the stimulation. Um, uh, you could be exhausted. Now, the fact that you need a sweetener in your coffee is also telling because the sweet flavor is naturally the nourishing flavor. So the sweet flavor helps to build up energy in the body. It's one of the reasons why we crave sweets. So um, this is something to think about and something to look at. Are you exhausted? Are you doing too much? You're not getting the nutrients that you need. Um, if you want a cup of coffee, have one. But if you need a cup of coffee, that's a completely different animal. Um, Okay, I'm going to keep moving. I'll take one question from you guys over here. Marty says, what do you think about lectins in beans, grains, and legumes along with the nightshades? Marty, I love all food in every category across the board. <laughs> right? I love all food. They have to be properly prepared, right? So you soak the grains and the beans. That's how they were traditionally processed. Uh, nightshades, I don't have a problem with nightshades. But if you have a congested liver, you'll have a problem with nightshades because Part of the liver's job is to uh, metabolize all of the toxins that come into the body, and nightshades uh, contain alkaloids, and alkaloids can be toxic to the internal environment. So if you have a congested liver filled with toxins or you're not getting, the liver's not getting the support it needs from the kidneys, uh, right, if that, that could be liver blood deficiency, then, then you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble with nightshades. Uh, and it shows up with uh, achy fingers, right? If you eat tomatoes and potatoes and eggplants and peppers and you get achy fingers, then you have to look at liver, the health of the liver. Um, okay. 
Uh, Anne says, hi, Andrea. I just finished a protocol to overcome candida. It seems like the whole world has candida, right? I had it too years ago. Uh, overcome candida and believe it was successful. However, I've noticed that I still have occasional itching around my vagina. It's not intense like a yeast infection. I have no abnormal discharge ever, and it comes and goes randomly. I try to wear mostly cotton underwear. I do shave around that area. Well, that can make it a little itchy, right? Because when the hair comes in, <laughs> so it, it may not be candida. It could maybe, maybe it's the shaving of the JJ situation, uh, right? Because they come in and they get a little prickly <laughs> instead of soft and, and cushy, like a little soft bush. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I don't have any other symptoms of candida, and I'm wondering if this itching is normal or related to candida. How much itching is normal? Thanks for your help. Okay, so, um, you know, you could get a couple of little itches down there, you know, but if you're itching all the time, to, you know, then that's that's not so good. It's uh, I'm glad you're wearing cotton underwear. That's smart. Um, but if you did your candida protocol and it was successful, uh, well, you know, yeast, and candida are two different things, right? So yeast is uh, is not candida. Candida is a fungus. <laughs> so um, you you might have yeast. Oh, do you see that little dog that just walked by? You might have yeast, but not have candida. So um, you know, there's a lot to look at. I, I don't want to give you the wrong information. Maybe stop shaving for a couple of weeks, or just shave on the outside and shave in the direction that the hair grows right if you shave up i know this may be a little tmi but if you shave up against the way the hair grows you may get ingrown little hairs and those can be itchy as well um that, that i'm just saying so you want to shave in the direction that it grows so that will be shaving in the downward direction and don't shave the whole thing off you're a woman you got hair right don't shave the whole thing off <laughs> leave, leave some hair over there Okay, <laughs> let's see what we got here. Um, I'll take another one. Uh, Shelly says, and this is one of the live questions. How are we doing on time? 425, okay. Uh, Shelly says, my two-year-old daughter, my two-year-old granddaughter is borderline anemic, and she doesn't like meat. What other foods are rich in iron for her? Uh, beets, spinach, but in order to get the iron from the spinach, it has to, you need vitamin C with that. As well as, I would suggest yellow dock. So yellow dock can help you, can help her uptake the um, the iron, right? It'll help you absorb iron better. That's yellow dock. Uh, but also something to consider is, you know, like she doesn't eat meat as she tried all different meats and different cuts of meats. And at that young age, two years old, you may want, you know, if you're giving a plain piece of steak, not a good idea. The proteins are too hard for a two-year-old to digest. You want to have that stewed so that it's soft. And you also want to have fat in there because fat activates all the other processes to help you digest and absorb the meat better. Um, so that's all stuff to consider as well. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Tammy. <laughs> okay. Margaret says, what does having way too much gas mean? Could it be a parasite if someone eats well? Um, way too much gas uh, could mean that you have – like if you're eating sugars with grains, gas will be there. If you're eating fruits with meats, gas will be there. So you may want to do a little food combining for a little while just to reset the digestive system. So food combining is, um, it's actually food separating, right? It's not really combining. You take away the proteins from the, the starches and you, you just have the starches with the fruits and you have the beans by themselves. Um, uh, but also I would suggest having like some type of bitters. To help you process better as well as taking a daily walk to improve the motility and the movement of your intestines so that you're not getting these pockets where the gas can form and develop but you're actually moving everything along in a nice uh, quick uh, disposable way right it's in your body takes the nutrition that it needs it doesn't sit around for too long boop, and there it goes out um, okay so let's uh, let's come here Patricia says I have Headaches and pressure in my head every day, and my head is pulsing, especially when I go to sleep. I have an inability to relax. I also have tinnitus and nervous tics. Thank you. Okay. So this is what I teach my students in the New Healers Master Coaching in Action program. This is uh, ancient medicine, right? Your body is obviously giving you 
really clear signs that there is some stuff going on. Um, so you don't want to wait until disease manifests, right? So here you have nervous tics, right? So nervous tics, that indicates liver wind, right? So it could be nervous tic here. It could be a nervous tic here. It could be a nervous tic that just happens here. It could be a nervous tic like, you know, your head shakes to one side, right? These are all nervous tics, and that comes from something called liver wind. So the liver is the commander of the blood, right? It's the commander in, in Chinese medicine. So if it's ticking, right, it's, right, it's, go, go, go that way, no, no, go that way, right? It's not, it's not in harmony with the rest of the body. So um, I would suggest a liver cleanse for you. I have one on my website. It's a nice one with Buplerum, uh, ancient root that'll help disperse that 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 energy that's kind of beep, boop, 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 so open it up um, so uh, go to my website www.andrewbeeman.com and put into the little search bar uh, liver cleanse or liver tea uh, and that should help now you also have an inability to relax right that's showing that again that liver again you have this tightness that's happening inside right so your ligaments and your tendons should be nice and loose and relaxed. So I would suggest stretching in the morning. Every single morning, get up and stretch so that your meridians open, right? So I could tell you to drink the tea. I could tell you, oh, yeah, eat, eat greens for your liver. I could tell you, oh, have sour lemon in the morning. That's good for the liver, right? But if you don't help your liver along, right, the liver is the commander. It's the commander of the blood. Um, if you don't help it along by moving all the other meridians, uh, then you're going to have energy get stuck inside the body. It's stuck here. It gets stuck there. It's getting stuck there, right? So on my website, there is um, there's an article called uh, uh, Wake Up and Do This Exercise, right? It's just five stretches you do in the morning. It's what I teach the students in my New Healers Master Coaching Program. Uh, and by the way, for those of you that are interested in my New Healers Master Coaching Program, it launches June 21st. Um, go to andreabeeman.com. And look under programs, New Healers Master Coaching Program. We cover all the meridians. We cover the, you know, the herbs for each of the organ systems. We cover visual diagnosis. We cover chakras. And uh, we, a lot, it's a lot of fun stuff. It's, I believe it's the future of healthcare. That's what I believe. Um, you know, and, and more and more hospitals and doctors are really waking up to, you know, they want to know other types of healing because they, they see that the medications and the surgeries and just taking out people's organs and oh your intestine goodbye oh your gallbladder goodbye okay <laughs> this goodbye goodbye to that goodbye appendix goodbye thyroid goodbye right it doesn't really heal anything they're just chopping you up it's like you're going into a a, a car shop and you're getting a you know they're chopping a chop shop i don't know what they're called i think they're called chop shops take a car into the shop and take out all the parts uh okay so you're not a car right hold on to your parts as long as you can uh okay so I'll take a question from here. Uh, Lillian says, my holistic nutritionist Georgette told me about you. She wasn't kidding. You are a badass. <laughs> Thanks, Lillian. <laughs> Your brilliance is flowing and we appreciate it. I'm Hashi's and hoping to stay off medications. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, guess, I guess I could be considered a badass. Uh, uh, it's my New York. It's my New York. I'm like straight shooter. It's funny. Whenever I go and I do conferences anywhere else, like I, I do conferences all over the world. And I'm telling you, people always come up to me and they go, man, you don't, you just go right to the point. You don't, you don't have to fluffing out anything up. You just, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, like how much time do we got in this life? You know, I don't want to give you fluff. I'm going to give you what you need. Goodbye. Get going and, and let's do this thing. Uh, so for Hashi's, go onto my website and, and put in Hashimoto's. When stress is high, the Hashi's antibodies, the Tashimoto's, the antibodies will go up. Um, when the digestive system isn't functioning uh, at its properly, uh, at its ideal, the antibodies will go up. And if you have parasites or an overgrowth of bacteria like SIBO, the antibodies will go up as well. Uh, so you can totally, you know, like I was diagnosed with Hashi's. I had initially hyperthyroid, then hypothyroid, then Hashimoto's, right? And, um, and they said, oh, no, you can never, ever heal that thing. You just got to keep your body in check. So it may always go off and out of balance when you got high stress and all this stuff or you're eating, a, you know, like stuff that's um, maybe not working for your system. But you could keep it normal and happy and healthy. And also with Hashi's, which is an autoimmune condition, right, you have to think about this is fifth chakra. So this is your ability to express yourself and, you know, express yourself with grace and wisdom so what's going on? How are you expressing yourself? 
Hashimoto's is an autoimmune attack, right? It's an attack on the self. So are you saying anything negative about yourself? You know, like, um, I can't do this. I wish I was better. I'm, I'm too fat. You know, like all the negative stuff, our body hears us. You know, our, our cells are brilliant, man. You know, like our human body is amazing. It's amazing. And it listens to us and it hears what we say. So this is your vibration, right? This is your connection to how you are expressing yourself. So like for those of you with um, autoimmune diabetes, right? Uh, then you have to look at third chakra, which is the connection to yourself. How do you feel about yourself? How are you, do you self-esteem, um, uh, your ability to care for yourself, right? All of that lives in the, in the gut. Uh, but that's, oh, Lord, don't get me started. I could go on about this stuff for hours and hours and days and days and years and years. Uh, so let's, let's keep going, get some more stuff. Um, let me take a question from here. Uh, Trini says, where do I find Hawthorne berries and hibiscus? Uh, I have no idea where to find some of the ingredients in the recipes on your website. Okay, so in the recipes on my website, they're hyperlinked. So I always give a link to ingredients that I think that you guys may not be able to find. Um, so Hawthorne berries and hibiscus, so you're doing that heart tea, right? This is, this is for toning the capillaries. This is for um, building the blood. This is a, a really amazing uh, tea. It's the Hawthorne berry and hibiscus tea for um, keeping your body toned, right? So the remember I said the, the liver is the commander of the blood, but the heart is, you know, it's, it's, it's in Western medicine, it's a pump, right? It's much more than just a pump. This is like the everything of the everything, right? Your heart, whether your heart is feeling good or not good, it's gonna, it's gonna have a, send a message to every other organ in your body. So you wanna make sure that this is toned and feeling good. Um, so when I say toned, because it is a pump, right? It is pumping, right? Liver's commanding, the liver's commanding blood. Okay, this blood go to the digestive system, this blood go to the, uh, uh, go to the heart, this blood go here, right? It's commanding the blood, but the heart is actually pumping that blood. Um, so to pump, right, when you think of pump, right, think about when somebody goes to the gym and they are toned, right? They, that's toned, They're, their muscles are toned. So with the Hawthorne berries and the hibiscus, it tones the capillaries, it'll tone the system up. All right, I'll take another question here. Uh, Shelly says, have you ever heard of a holistic product for anxiety and pain called Kratom? I use it for anxiety and depression. It's amazing. Yeah, I have heard of it. I haven't used it myself, but I have heard good things about it. And then Diana says, my five-year-old is on Synthroid. I bought iodine, but I'm scared to give it to him. Yeah, I wouldn't give if he's on Synthroid. So, so Synthroid is a thyroid hormone, right? It's... Um, uh, I believe Synthroid is a combination of T3 and T4. So the iodine helps your body naturally build the T3 and the T4. So if he's on Synthroid, I wouldn't give iodine as well. But I would try, as, I would try to, to get the, your five-year-old off of Synthroid. I think that um, there are many other ways to build. Unless your son was born without a thyroid, um, I would suggest that you start to wean him off of the Synthroid and start to, and now I can't give you medical advice, so I'm just going to say that right now, but I'm just talking into the air, into the ether of what I would do if I had a five-year-old on Synthroid because then he'll need to stay on it for the rest of his life uh, as his thy own thyroid shuts down, right? Um, uh, but I, I've, had, I've had clients also that have been on Synthroid for like 25 years and they get off. So, uh, But five years old is really young to be on Synthroid. Um, so you can look on my website, put into the search bar, go to www.andrewbeeman.com, put into the search bar about iodine and all, all the stuff that you need will pop up. Okay. So Stephanie says, hey, Andrew, I remember you doing a webinar on eyes and what they can tell you about your health. I have puffiness below my eyes, not bags, but swollen little pockets on the eye socket bone. I think I remember either you mentioning liver or kidney support was recommended for this symptom. Okay, so Stephanie, yeah, so this is directly connected to, like, right underneath, right here, this is stomach, and right here you have uh, liver, and then right here you have kidney, and then underneath here you have uh, the digestive system, right, large intestine. So each area under the eye represents another area. So if it's just swollen, um, you may not be digesting properly, right? So you may be, your lymphatic system and your digestive system may be uh, congested. Right? You may not be able to move fats along as well as you could be. 
Um, so exercise would be great, as well as doing some lymph support foods, foods and teas. So burdock root, red clover, um, any of the radish family really help the lymph system as well. Red radish, daikon radish, um, uh, and there's lots of radish recipes on my website. Uh, but that would help as well, just to help clear some of the stuff. Okay, we're at 438, and there is a lot of questions still left. So let me just, I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. I'll get to a few more. Um, Catherine says, thank you for all you do. I'm 62 years old and a health coach. Yeah, that is, that is the uh, future of the world right there. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, I would get maybe one cold a year, but now I get several. Last year, I had seven. I have brought, brought my stress levels down, and I eat more whole foods in the past three years than in my whole life. Embarrassing to coach my clients with the stuff he knows. And when friends see me, they say, you're sick again? I'm even going to bed earlier. My mother is 90 and eats tons of dairy, sugar, gluten, and processed foods and hardly ever gets a cold. I would greatly appreciate your wisdom regarding my situation, Catherine. Okay, so Catherine, you could be eating tons of whole foods, but they may not be right for your system. Uh, and they may not be processed properly. So I would suggest always, this is what I tell my clients, first and foremost, seasonal, local, right? If you're eating a whole foods diet, get seasonal and local. And that whole foods diet could actually include dairy. <laughs> it could include um, what, what your mom eats, gluten, processed foods. It could include that. Uh, so this is something to consider. Your immune system keeps crashing. So something is affecting you and not supporting your body. Um, so I would, uh, I mean, like the first thing that comes to mind is I want to say, get some astragalus root and put it into your soups and stews and stocks, right? Cause you may be in a state of deficiency. So like uh, what a lot of people will do is they go on a whole foods diet and they eat tons and tons and tons of vegetables and grains and beans and, and, you know, they clear out their body and then they start to go into a state of deficiency, right? Then you have all the adrenal fatigues and stuff like that and the immune system crashing over and over again. So there has to be a balance. So I'm all for uh, eating whole foods diet, but you got to make sure it's working for you. So this is where you tap in, uh, sit in meditation and ask your body what you need. Literally have a conversation with your body, calm it down. What do I need today? What's going to support me today? And it, it you know, like, uh, it could be chicken liver. It could be uh, chicken liver on toast. <laughs> you know, it could be, uh, um, a, a dairy. It could be milk. It could be whatever it is. Just start to tap in and listen. You know, like we are wise that we don't even know how wise we are. And we shut off our own innate wisdom, and we listen to every other thing out there in the world, and it may not be right for your body. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, Ozzy says, hi, Andrea. I'm an IIN student, and I love your programs and your energy. Thanks, Ozzy. Uh, would you please explain the process of cleansing for spring, what to eat and what not to eat, and for how many days? Okay. So the process of cleansing for spring, this is, um, this is ancient medicine again. And I think this will be the last question. I can't get to the other questions. There's just too many, too many. Um, but, uh, you know, like every, every month or every other month, I'll try to get to as many questions as I, as I can. I'll, you know, peek through. Plus, I'll take some of your questions live. So, um, so the process of cleansing for spring. So we're about to go into summer. For those of you that live in, in an area that has seasons, right? Um, and some people on the other side of the world may be going into winter right now. Um, so for spring, like we're connected to the earth that we live on. I know it's hard to believe <laughs> sometimes that people wonder, you know, like how, what are human beings doing here on this planet? We're actually connected to the planet. So I'll give you an example. When you're in utero, in your mother's womb, your mother is feeding you via the umbilical cord direct. And it's connected to her food that she is eating and it's processing, going into your digestive system, going into become the blood that is going into the umbilical cord to feed you as a child, right? As a, as a fetus. And then you come out of the womb and boop, off comes the umbilical cord. And now here's where food goes in. And this food is coming from the earth that you are living on, right? So we're directly connected to the earth via your mom in utero. And then when we get out, we're directly connected to the earth via our own digestive system, taking the food into our system. 
So according to ancient medicine, the human being is not separate from its environment. So very important. Again, this comes to local and seasonal eating. So in the springtime, things are shooting up, right? Energy is coming up out of the earth. Uh, we also have a kidney one point on the bottom of our feet that's absorbing all of this upward rising energy. I mean, you look around at spring, everything's starting to bud and pop and grow and sprouts are shooting up. That energy is coming up into the system. Now, when that energy comes up into the system, anything that is congested in your system, anything that hasn't been moved out in a good way that is clogging your system will come out in the form of a headache, allergies, right? Eyes red, swollen, nose running, right? At, at springtime. Um, people will get a spring flu, a spring cold. Uh, so all of this is spring energy when the body is congested. So that's why I always recommend in the spring a nice gentle liver cleanse. So you can add more radishes into your diet, asparagus, perfect, upward rise, just to help move everything up and out, right? It wants to come up and out. And then, of course, you move into the summer, which is more fruits and more carbohydrates and more of the summer-type foods. Um, and just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So this is the time for lots of baby greens, uh, all scallions, amazing for spring springtime energy, as well as, believe it or not, those roots that have been in the earth that are spicy and pungent to also help move things, right? So horseradish, right? Even, even though it's a downward growing root and it's very fall and winter, you could use horseradish in a salad, in a salad dressing, and that can help to clear and move everything out. But I would stick mostly with the radishes because those are also, that spicy pungent is going to help to move everything out. So that's what I talk about when I talk about spring cleansing. Um, what to eat and what not to eat. What I wouldn't eat in the spring if you're doing a cleanse, this is where, and the other gal talked about how she's getting colds all the time and she took out dairy and, and all that stuff and wheat. So in the springtime, if you're doing a cleanse, I wouldn't use building foods. I just wouldn't use any building foods, right? We're not, you don't really, when your body is trying to get rid of all this mucus and phlegm and stuff, don't build it back up. Don't put dairy in. Don't put, you know, a sandwich, a turkey sandwich, or cheese into your body, right? Uh, save that for the fall when you go for a hike or something like that. Um, so, and spring cleanses, they, you know, they some people can do it for three days. Some people will fast. I like to fast in the spring. I usually do a three to a five day fast. Sometimes it's a water fast. Sometimes it's a juice fast. And that helps to clear out my system. And then I'm, I'm good for the rest of the summer. Um, okay. So um, I want to... Oh, thanks, Dawn. She says, check out the website and webinar. So informative. Yeah. So for those of you that um, uh, don't know who I am and you want to get to know me a little better, well, get to know me, uh, go to www.andreabeeman.com and all of my classes and webinars, I have webinars coming up. I, I do them every month. Tomorrow I have a class for those of you that are interested in uh, in aging well. It's, on, it's a cooking class and it's... Um, Healthy aging, cooking for healthy aging. And it's not that you wait until you're 90 to start cooking this way, <laughs> right? You actually start incorporating these foods and these herbs that I'm going to talk about in the class, whether it's um, uh, foti, hishowu, ashwagandha, uh, eleutherococcus, um, using stocks to keep the muscular skeletal system strong and healthy. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Plus, I'll give you a tea for longevity using... Um, Really fun herbs that uh, that'll get your whole body feeling fabulous. So that is on Learn It Live, and if you go to my website www.andreabeeman.com, you'll see the um, the links for the Learn It Live class tomorrow. It's a live cooking class, and it goes at twelve thirty, from twelve thirty to one thirty, one forty five, and it's a live class, so you get to put in your questions while we're cooking. Um, and for those of you that can't make it live. Don't sweat it. You have access to the recording forever once you register for that class and purchase that class. And it's, it's really not expensive at all. And it, you're worth it. You're worth every single thing that you could do for yourself. And, um, and thank you for joining me today for Ask Andrea. And for those of you that I didn't get to your questions, I'm sorry. I can only answer a certain amount of questions each time. And, um, and my next Ask Andrea will probably be, uh, I want to say, July. <laughs> so if you have a question... Put it in. Go to andreabeeman.com, and on the sidebar, you'll see the Ask Andrea. Put it in, and I'll try and get through them, and I'll also always try and get you live questions. Thank you so much for coming out. Have a great day. I'm sending you a whole lot of love from my heart to your heart, and, and I'll see you guys next time. Guys and gals. Okay.
Bye, everybody.